So I'm here to present a study we have conducted uh, between 2015 and 2017 regarding the predictors of bladder dis dysfunction in patients with uh, neurodegenerative, neurodegenerative ataxia. Just a quick overview. So what are spinal cerebellar ataxias? This is a group of uh, heterogeneous group of uh, autosomal dominant inherited progressive disorders. There is pro prominent damage to the cerebellum and to the spinal cerebellar pathways and also other regions such as the spinal cord, the basal ganglia and the brainstem may be, may be involved. This is our study, so it's a cross-sectional study. The objectives were to assess the prevalence, characteristics and impact on quality of life of LATS uh, in patients with uh, uh, different forms of SCAS and uh, to identify possible predictors of LATS in patients with SCAS. The patients had a genetically determined diagnosis of SCA, 1, 2, 3, 6, or 7, and the, uh, they were attending a tertiary center for uh, neurological diseases at the National Hospital in Queen Square. Uh, the, the data collected were demographic data, characteristic and severity of the clinical symptoms uh, through the uh, SARA scale, which is a, a basically a scale that measures the severity of the ataxia. We also took uh, uh, note of the non-ataxia symptoms and the patients from a urological perspective had to complete uh, some questionnaires, uh, particularly the USP, IPSS, SF Qualivin and the uh, NBD. Also, uh, some of the patients underwent urodynamics. These are the results. This is our sample. So 51 subjects were enrolled, uh, basically four patients with SCA1, 11 SCA2, 13 SCA3, 17 SCA6, and, and 6 with SCA7. 54% uh, uh, of patients were female, mean age uh, 57 years old with a mean duration of disease of 10 years, uh, and the SARA score, the, um, basically the scale that measures the severity of the, of the ataxia, was 13.5. The maximum is 40. Just to have a... These are the results according to the questionnaires. So the USP score showed a prevalence of LATS of 82%. The most frequent symptoms were uh, OAB symptoms, frequency urgency incontinence, uh, less than 20% had uh, uh, voiding symptoms, according to the questionnaires. With regards to IPSS, uh, you can see that the severity of LATS was mild, moderate for most of patients, but uh, almost 50% of patients had uh, quite a significant impact on the quality of life, from mixed to terrible. And when we looked for the possible predictors of uh, um, bladder dysfunction, we found that the age and the SARA score were uh, the, basically showed that they are significant predictors of the dysfunction. Uh, the SARA score, uh, as I said, is the, the one that measures the severity of the ataxia. These are just some of the urodynamics findings. Uh, these are patients with the SCA3. As you can see, uh, there are no many, many studies published uh, on, uh, on this question. Um, as you can see, the findings are uh, quite uh, mixed. Uh, so most patients had DO, but uh, uh, three patients had uh, detrusor sphincter dyssynergia, two patients had increased PVR. With regards to SCA7, we are still collecting uh, data. Uh, as you can see, the picture is slightly different from the SCA3, so there is no detrusor overactivity. We had one patient with detrusor sphincter dyssynergia, and uh, in general, they tend to have less uh, um, voiding symptoms. Uh, with regards to management of LATS, uh, despite the high prevalence of LATS, only 18% um, of patients were on antimuscarinics, very few patients on different treatments and 38% uh, uh, on lifestyle changes, so most of the patients did not receive any treatment. Uh, so this study is uh, to show that a large proportion of patients with the SCA have LATS, and that the age and the severity of the ataxia are a determinant in the severity of the LATS. Only a small proportion of patients are on treatment, and the common neurodynamics findings uh, are DO, especially in patients with SCA3 and uh, the trusor sphincter dyssynergia probably, probably related to the 
um, parameter tract involvement. The urinary disturbances we think are maybe multifactorial, possibly due to the fact that these diseases basically affect many areas in the nervous system, not only the cerebellum, but also the pyramidal tract, the peripheral nerve. Thank you. So are there any questions? Marcus, no. <laughs> Trying to avoid looking atactic. Um, <laughs> you've got two conceivable influences on lower urinary tract, I'd have said. You've got the possibility of a bulbar involvement. Yeah. And is there also the possibility of a atactic pelvic floor? Does it go and affect the levator ani and other muscles of the pelvic floor? Can you sort of comment on the, just saying, possibly related to pyramidal tract, just... Is, we'd like more. You're a neurologist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tell us more. Yeah, now it's a bit difficult because the first thing I have to say is that it's a very heterogeneous, uh, heterogeneous group of diseases. So the scatry affects, for example, a lot of the basal ganglia, which are not affected in other forms, uh, like the SCA6 is more purely ataxia, so it affects more the cerebellum. And uh, anyway, the patients with SCA6 have. Uh, lower unit, urinary tract symptoms. So it may be that there's a tax of the pelvic floor. It may be that, that there's involvement of the uh, spinal bulbospinal pathway. It may be that there's the involvement of the cerebellum, but also of the pathway, uh, I mean, the cerebral bulbo, bulbar pathway. So I think it's uh, because they affect so many areas. Uh, I think it's difficult to know what, what are the main causes. The attacks of the pelvic floor may be one of them. Hi, Sarah. I'm Vibhash Mishra. I'm a urologist from London. I used to be a registrar some years ago in your department. Right. Um, uh, my question is, uh, I may have missed it, but uh, when you showed the prevalence of uh, symptoms, yeah. when you broke down the... Um, you, I didn't see any voiding symptom. Is it that they don't have any voiding no, symptoms they have, at so the time of presentation? I didn't put it in the slides. But so there were voiding symptoms. They were less less than twenty percent. And again, we we are doing uh, like further analysis. We are seeing that, for example, patient with scatry, that is uh, basically one of the forms uh, that affects the basal ganglia with Parkinsonism, extra pyramidal symptoms. Uh, uh, they tend to have more uh, DSD and more uh, lower, more um, voiding symptoms, uh, while, the while the forms that, that affect mainly the cerebellum tend to have more, uh, like, sort of, they are suprapontine lesions, so, so they have uh, more uh, DO, OAB symptoms. So I think it's, uh, yeah, because it, it, the results depend also on the fact that we have put together a lot of patients, but the diseases are quite different uh, one from the other. But they definitely have some uh, lower urine, I mean, some avoiding symptoms. And my other question is... Um, uh, can, we, uh, can we postpone the question because we are running out of time? Just a quick comment. As, as a urologist, I uh, we really appreciate if you measure everybody with urinemics and urflow and, uh, and IPSS to get a good overview. Maybe you, you correlate with the SCAR stages and this would really help us during urinemics when we have these kind of patients. Yeah. Thank you Thank very you. much.